for discussion today is the love lines one, two, and three. Fabulous rulers from the fabulous Beth Anemish. Now, uh, it's no secret that I'm a great fan of hers. I love what she does. I love how she thinks out of the box and make things her own and, and create and play in general. She just creates magic. So I want to show you a couple of things today on what you can do with these three rulers. You'll see that they are basically the same. Even if you fit them on top of the other, they just scaled versions of each other. Now, the name implies hearts, right? Because love lines. But we can do so much more than just make hearts. I'll grab my paper. Today I'm on tracing paper since I'm out of my plastic sheets. So I'm just going to show you a couple of things that you can do with it. We're going to start off with a block. And this is just me fiddling around with it. We've actually discovered this, or figured out how to do these little hearts in the corners while in a ruler class recently. And I thought it was actually very cute. Um, apart from being cute, it just creates such a nice emphasis in the corner, but then allows you to create a new focal point in the center. So what you'll see here is that I've added various sorts of details if you want to, but you can absolutely just leave these hearts as is just to break down areas. We place them in the ruler class specifically in a point-on-point uh, -point block, but a much bigger block. And it just beautifully filled those outer triangles. So I'm going to show you how to draw this, and then we'll move on to a border, and we'll move on to a central design. Just to give you an idea that we don't have to stick to hearts necessarily. Now this first one, obviously we have a heart shape, uh, but I really like the the way the two hearts merge and you have this interconnected section. Uh, so easily can you turn this into a butterfly. So you can have great fun with this. Let's start. First of all, I'm just going to slide my tracing paper underneath a fresh sheet. Then I don't have to redraw all the details as in the whole block area because it just all shines through. Very cool, right? And we can layer and do various uh, design auditions on this method without losing any information. Now, you will see shining through will be the border of my block, which sits more or less there. And then I also need to mark the center lines. Okay, center line marked. Here I can see where the border of my block is running. What is a crucial thing to remember when you are playing and auditioning with rulers is that when you do your planning purposes and you're working on scale one to one, in other words, the block that I've drawn is the exact size of the quilt block that I want to work on, that you need to use your drawing wheel. And if you don't know yet what it is, this is the drawing wheel. And this references or this represents your ruler foot. And the opening in the center represents where you put your represents your needle. And remember with ruler work, our ruler foot half an inch diameter, our needle is a quarter of an inch away from the ruler edge. So we are not going to get a line, we're not going to get our stitch line where the edge of the ruler sits, but offset by a quarter of an inch. And that is super important to remember. Otherwise, you are going to plan and make notes and references on rulers, but when you get to the stitching part, things won't turn out as planned. Sometimes that's okay, other times not at all. Now, once we have our block set out and we have our diagonal reference lines, we're going to start playing with the ruler, start placing the ruler and figure out where what should be. I want to try and move a little bit closer. There we go. Now, you will see as I'm placing my ruler where the black line shines through. The black line is going to be my stitch line. And the black line is a result of drawing with the drawing wheel so that I get that quarter of an inch offset from the ruler. If I was just going to place my ruler where I want the stitch lining to be and trace that without the drawing wheel, 
I want to show you the difference. Now, this line is where I drew it. But when I get to my machine, this line is where the stitching will be. And you can see quite obviously that this will result in a disaster when it comes to uh, achieving the accurate quilting that you planned out on paper. Because you might have allowed for a whole row of pebbles or pearls to happen in this space. Or some smaller feathers. But now you're not going to have that space because your quilting actually takes up more, more area. So this little doodah. The drawing wheel, super important. Now, with most of Beth Ann's rulers, she includes a drawing wheel for planning purposes. You can also, if you're in South Africa, get hold of us. We have drawing wheels that we've cut for general ruler use. If you don't have any of Beth Ann's rulers, if you're in the States or anywhere else, you should be able to order online from a company called Barn Cat Studios. And she creates a set of drawing wheels with different opening sizes so that you can use different sizes of markers. Now the benefit of that is that when you get to your fabric on your quilt you can still use a drawing wheel with your white chalk marker or your blue pen and do trace off these designs in their exact placement if it's going to help you feel more confident about your process and getting it quilted in the accurate spot. Okay, now let's do this little corner heart. I have to admit while I'm drawing out just the boundary of this block that I'm not a very heartsy person uh, when it comes to the quilting, but this heart that shapes with Beth Ann's ruler is so beautiful because it doesn't have just the straight edge. It has this nice curved edge, which is for me beneficial because I can do so much more than just do hearts. Now keeping our width of um, our foot in mind, our quarter inch offset. I'm going to fiddle around with my ruler and look at things and to figure out what I find is important for me. I don't want my design to be cut off. So I want to make sure in this instance, but yours might differ. So you need to set your own rules. I'm kind of placing my drawing wheel and just having a look at where my design will be if this is the position. And I'm running around with it because over here I know I also don't want my design being cut off by the seam allowance. So I find my position where I want it. And then I use a fine tip permanent marker. Something like this, uh, the old overhead projector markers or a fine sharpie. Anything that's permanent with a fine tip. And I give myself reference marks on my ruler. And that's where you'll see this little orange circle and you'll see this reference mark. You'll see these lines that I've used on um, previous projects. In fact, or on the next um, things that I'm going to show you, the reference lines for these corner hearts will be this reference point to remind me that's where I need to place my, my ruler and this little reference line that lines up with my diagonal reference mark. And now I can use my drawing wheel and trace around my ruler without moving my ruler. And that is going to be as accurate of a representation as it can be of your actual stitching, your actual quilting. Now as you'll see that this, these rulers only have half the heart. So we have the ability to flip rulers and turn them upside down, mirror them, rotate them in any direction to achieve whatever we want. So I can literally grab my ruler, use this diagonal line as a mirror image line. In other words, I need to just flip my ruler, line up reference point, which will be this orangey or red reference mark with this little reference tick mark. And I'm checking my position with my drawing wheel. Yes, it's where I wanted. And I can trace. Never letting the ruler move. And I want to take away the bottom page just so you can see clearly. There is our ruler work.
heart with overlapping lines. And I really, really like this. So you can place it in all four corners or you can create your own freestanding design. Because what if we add... some detail and now we have a butterfly or a moth something something simple but interesting we can even start adding more wings to it by dropping the ruler this way for instance and I'm really just playing with what ifs at the moment And look what happened. If we mirror image it on that side, we have a beautiful butterfly. Okay, so let's tear this off. <clears throat> and just go back to our block. Now you'll see that I've just placed a heart in each corner. And you can then start adding some detail to it. What I've also done is I took the same heart template and I've just lined my black line, which will be my stitch line, with this inner reference line on the ruler. I'm going to try and see if I can show you a bit clearer. Here we go. You'll see there's a quarter of an inch offset line on the inside of the ruler. So if I place that offset line on my previously sewn or previously stitched line, just as best as it can be, and I use my drawing wheel, I can now create an offset channel. Let's make it nice and dark. In fact, I can use my permanent marker. It might reach, there we go, might actually reach the paper. And if I offset again, flip my ruler, place it as accurately as I can on the Previously sewn stitch line. There goes my offset channel. And I've done the same with the inner one. Just done an offset. In fact, I've just lined up my ruler. And do you see how I wiggle my ruler until it fits the line that I'm wanting to, to echo? I'm wiggling it around because when it was on the layout of the of the heart here. And I just move it up and move it up. Do you see that they do? They no longer meet each other. But if I, I start twisting and rotating my ruler, I'll do get an angle that lines up with the previously sewn stitch line. And then I can again use my drawing wheel for planning purposes, which my, I don't want to force my marker through it. Let me just switch back to pencil. And there we go. Now we have a quarter of an inch offset channel. So this page is just a couple of ideas of what you can do inside of these hearts to start testing and filter your desire and make it as custom and as detailed as you prefer or keeping it as simple and flowing. Let's have a look at a border design. Now you'll see no hearts in this border even though it was all done with the hearts runes. And just depending on the border size, you would be able to play around with whichever ruler you want. And it would also then depend on the tightness of the curve to create basically this OG shape or lantern shape in a border. So let me show you how I've achieved this with this small, let me just double check, yes, with the small love lines, number one ruler. You have your border in place. Let's move up a bit. There we go. We have our border. And you need to find a center line to your border. That's my dashed line. And then depending on the width of your border, divide it up into equal spaces. And at this stage, mine is round about three and three quarters of an inch. So if you aim for more or less something like that, you should be good with the small love lines. If your spacing ends up being wider or you want a narrower or a shallower and a, a flat OG shape, then you are going to go up to the bigger love lines rulers. 
So this is just a more or less measurement, but what is important is that it's set out, uh, spaced out evenly across your border so that your design works out completely. Okay. Uh, I like to do a set out from the center of my border and then work my way to the sides so that I can figure out what I want and what I don't want. And the shape that we're going to work with now is the inside of the, the hard shape. Okay. Or, or what would be in an actual heart, the, the outside, in fact. But it's this inner curve, not the outer curve, that we're going to work with now. I am going to place my drawing wheel in the center of the border. And then I'm going to maneuver my ruler until I find my happy spot. And what I'm looking for is... There's a reference line already on the ruler that I'm going to line up with this center line. I hope you'll be able to see that. So the reference line lined up with the center line. Um, and I'm placing my pen at the, the point of starting. Okay, And then the ruler just rests against my drawing wheel. And I'm coming around and up to the center line. I'm keeping my pen there. And now what I'm doing is, is I'm going to flip my ruler this way around. And again, I'm lining up this reference line with the center line. And the rest of my ruler will just rest on the point where I need to stop over here. Okay. And then I'll typically come back to the center and I do the other side. It's just the way my brain works. If you know how you want to lay it out, you can start on one end and just carry on. So I have my pen in place, or my, my needle has been dropped into that point there, and I'm aligning my ruler with the reference mark on the center line, but I'm also keeping an eye on this reference line to make sure I remain a quarter of an inch away from the reference point where I need to stop. So I've got my ruler down, and I'm tracing. I keep my ruler, my, my pen in place, and I just flip my ruler, and I realign everything. To create the rest of this bracket or this arc shape. And now that I know where my set out works from, the sides, I can jump and work from this end of the, the border. I've got my ruler flipped reference line on the center line ruler's end rests on the drawing circle and notice that even though I'm drawing into my fingers and I'm raising my pen I'm never taking any fingers off my completely off my ruler I want it to stay in place and that's the way you will quilt as well always making sure you have fingers on ruler when you need to reposition hands or feet and remember when you're actually quilting this Stop dead before you move hands and feet. Just keep flipping that ruler and realign things. I'm lifting my pencil, but I'm not lifting my hands off the ruler. Flip my ruler and realign things. There goes a slip of the pencil. Right, so that gives you the basic of this, this lantern or this OG shape or bracket shape border. Now you have really interesting spaces where you can quilt different things into. And what I've started doing over here is just break up the space. Add, again, an echo line towards the inside, making use of the ruler, just placing it at a different angle. In other words, this might be... Uh, the end of the ruler might be placed on the, the base reference line and I have these little tick marks that I've used now to place on the center line of the border. I might be able to do that shape of the intersection. And this is a beautiful opportunity for some feathers. Of course we've got to do feathers or any type of modern quilting. So an interesting border to play with using the Love Lines rulers. Over here we have a central design. That can be placed in a block or randomly between blocks. 
or like a secondary design pattern, any which way you feel like. Again, you will need central reference lines, horizontal, vertical, and the two 45 degree diagonal lines. And now we're going to use the ruler in a way that's more true to its fashion and the way that Beth Ann's designed them. I think you will always be able to go and have a look on her website and channel, YouTube channel, her Facebook page for uh, links and information about uh, how she uses her rulers. But this is the way that I thought I would show you. Okay, You will see that her ruler has a little opening and a crosshair on. Now what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to place the crosshair on one of my, my horizontal or vertical reference lines and I'm moving the ruler all the way down until the end touches the opposite reference line. In other words, if I'm on the vertical reference line, the tip of the ruler will touch the horizontal reference line. And I'm just lining up reference line with crosshair. And now I'm ready to go. There goes my stitching with my drawing wheel all the way around, but only until I hit that vertical reference line. <coughs> I beg your pardon. So I'm not going all the way down in this instance. I'm just stopping at the reference line. Now I can keep my pencil in place, flip my ruler, realign that crosshair on the vertical reference line, making sure the tip of the ruler touches the horizontal reference line and I'm ready to stitch the remainder until I reach the horizontal reference line and ta-da! Beautiful hearts! So I hope this gave you an idea or two that you can be quite flexible with these rulers. Another one I can quickly show you is you can create a frame inside a block. Have a look at this. Uh, you might have applique or embroidery in a big square block and what can you do to make things a little different and that is to use these rulers and the frame. And in this instance what have I done? Let's try and figure out. Um, there we go. I've used the bigger and well, let's come down to the bottom of the block. That would be easier. I use love lines number three. And in this instance, I've placed the crosshair, the opening or little dot in the center, uh, sorry, in the corner of the block, lined up the crosshairs with the border of the block, the perimeter of the block. And this is what gives me this framed internal shape. And then I would just flip to do it on this side, flip to do it on this side, flip to do it on this side. And you've got a framed area around your applique or your embroidery that you can now fill in with the design of your choice. These sets are a set of three and we have a limited amount available. So hop on the link below and get yours today.